Hey guys, so today's video is actually gonna be a chatty get ready. It is raining cats and dogs right now, as usual. So if you hear thunder and Cornelius crying, you know why. I just wanted to do like minimal, soft, easy makeup and I wanted to just film it for you guys. I got a ton of questions asking me if this was kind of like a wearable palette. This is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance and how you can do like a very minimal makeup look with this palette since it can be a little scary. There's like a lot of red tones and a lot of really warm shadows that can throw people off a little bit, but you can do like a very soft, natural makeup look. And that's what I'm gonna do today. Very simple, very easy. It's the same eye look that I wore in my Foreo review. So yeah, nothing too fancy or too tutorially. I'm just getting ready like I normally am and I'm filming it. I'm gonna use the NYX Angel Veil Skin Perfecting Primer. And now I'm actually going to be trying a new product I've never tried before. I wanted to use it for the first time with you guys. This is from the brand Milk Makeup. They sell this brand at Sephora. I got uh, a few PR products from them. And one of the things was this. This is their Sunshine Skin Tint. I hope I love it because it sounds amazing. This is basically a tinted moisturizer. You're not really going to get much coverage out of this. But I hope it's like decent coverage. I hope it doesn't feel like nothing. Really nice because it is like a pump formula, like a clicker thing. Never really seen a tinted moisturizer in this kind of packaging, so that's really cool. And it has SPF 30, which is awesome for a tinted moisturizer. I love that. And it's a physical SPF, which is my favorite. When I got this in the mail, there was like a paper explaining like all the cool benefits to this, but I pulled it up on my phone so I can read it to you. It says, it's a fresh take on liquid foundation, innovative packaging incorporating antimicrobial silver, delivers a weightless, preservative-free formula with a single click. It has a glass rollerball tip that glides smoothly on the skin. This tint is infused with a blend of avocado, mandarin, grapeseed, and olive oil for long-lasting hydration. That sounds awesome. They recommend you don't use a brush with this, so I hate using my fingers, but I'm gonna use my fingers to blend this in. And it's also available in eight shades. I wish there was a larger selection, but I'm in the shade light. This is a little bit too light for me like when I have a tan, but they sent me light and fair, and fair is too pink for me, so I'm gonna use the light. So I'm just gonna click it. Like, oh, uh, uh. It says to just roll it on your face, and then, I forgot about the scent. When I swatched this for the first time, like I swatched it on the back of my hand when I got it, I really, really do not like the scent of this, but hopefully once I blend it in, it goes away. This smells like licorice, like pure, pure licorice, which I despise. Licorice, the scent of licorice, the taste of licorice. I am someone who really, truly Hates licorice. But we could look past the scent if it has all these amazing, like if it does everything it claims to do. So maybe I'm putting too much, but whatever. So I'm just gonna blend that in with my fingers. It looks like it's too light. But we could work with it. It's not like too, not like terribly light, but it's pretty light. Okay, I have a feeling I put way too much product on because uh, it's feeling a little sticky. I'm gonna try to just like pat that in with this brush. Okay, so now that's blended and I actually do like the coverage. I wish I had like a shade darker. I feel a little bit like I have a white cast. So I wanna pick up medium, but this feels really tacky, like really tacky. This is definitely something I'm gonna need to set. But coverage wise, it's nice and it doesn't look gross on my skin. I put a lot of product on and it doesn't look cakey or thick. But we shall see. This could be like a cool thing to throw in your beach bag because it has SPF 30 and decent coverage. But it's just, it's like sticky because of all the oils that are in this product. For underneath my eyes, I'm gonna use my Glossier Stretch Concealer in the shade Light. 
just gonna put that on all the dark areas under my eyes. And on my lid as well. And in between my eyebrows, I have like a red birthmark. Now, this concealer is very thick, very creamy, so it definitely needs to be set. But before I set that and the rest of my face, because my face is a little tacky, I'm gonna go in with a cream highlight. I haven't used this yet. I purchased this off the Glossier website. This is their new Halo Scope. They have two different colors, but the other one was just too dark for my skin tone, so I picked up quartz. And it actually does have rose quartz like in the actual product, which is really cool. So I don't know if I should, well, yeah, eh, I guess I could use my fingers. Turned to tell you that I was a savage. I don't know how I feel about this. It looks, it looks nice, but um, I don't know. I definitely have liquid highlights or cream highlights. I mean that I like more than this. This just seems a little bit greasy feeling on my hands, and not too much glow is coming off. There's not much to this. I have gotten a ton of questions to use my. You guys can see them right here. I have the new Cover FX Enhancer Drops, and I have never used them. I have them here on display because I think the bottles are really cute, but I've never used them before, and I'm thinking of using them for the first time on camera, like doing a whole video, like a full face video using those highlights, like using them as eyeshadow, using it as a bronzer, highlight, mixing it with foundation. Like I want like a super intense video all about that. So let me know if you guys wanna see that. Leave me a comment down below if you wanna see like a first impressions on the new enhancer drops, like using them in action, definitely let me know. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set my, my concealer. I'm using the e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush with my NYC Smooth Skin Loose Face Powder. I really, really love this powder. It's like $3 and it's really nice. It's a bit messy, but it's a loose powder, I mean. You can't really see the cream highlight once I set my under eye concealer. I'm actually gonna set the rest of my face. I'm gonna use my Morphe MB5 uh, stippling brush with this same powder and I'm gonna set my face. So I don't know if you can tell, but pretty much the cream highlight I put down is pretty much gone, you can't see it once I set my entire face. So it would only make sense to apply this cream highlight after you've already set your face, but it is a very creamy, like it's very emollient, so I don't think this would lay well on top of powder. There are cream highlights I have in my collection that work well on top of powder, but this is very like, very, very moisturizing, so I wouldn't recommend it on top of powder, but if you put it under powder and then you powder your face, it's like, it's gone. You don't see it anymore, so oh, I actually don't know how I feel about this. But anyway, let's move on. I've set my face already, but yet it still feels a little bit tacky. This is definitely something I see myself using at the beach or the pool, where all I wanna do is just rub something on my face and then blend it in where I have SPF and coverage. But like in my actual makeup routine, it's a little bit too tacky for me. I'll be using this in my beach bag. Oh man, I was gonna use this, I forgot. This is the Pure Hydra Gel Lift. I've never tried this before, but Michelle from Ready Set Glamour talks about this. She says it's like her holy grail product. You use this underneath your eyes before concealer and I really wanted to try it. Oh, next time, next time. Now that we are already here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest of my face makeup. I'm gonna contour a little bit, just a little bit on the hollows of my cheeks. I'm using my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer with this Target Up and Up brush. And I'm just gonna contour a bit. So guys, what's up? <laughs> Tell me a story. What did you do today? What have you done today? Is it nighttime for you right now? Or early morning, what are you gonna do today? I'm gonna add a little bit to my temples here. And around my forehead. 
just kind of try to slim the five head a little bit, the six head. Okay, so now I'm gonna warm up the skin. I want to be a little bit more bronzy. I'm gonna use my Urban Decay Beached Bronzer in the shade Bronze. It's a very, very warm bronzer. Like, you can see the difference here compared to the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This is a little bit cooler. This one is a little bit more warm, which is really nice in the summer. At first, I didn't like this bronzer all that much, but I, I really like it now. So I'm just gonna warm up the skin. I feel like this bronzer kind of makes you look like you have a tan going. All these little hairs. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit on my nose like this. Just so it looks like the sun kissed my nose. And I'm also gonna bring some onto my neck so that everything matches. Okay, so now I'm gonna do something a little bit extra, but I'm gonna take my hourglass ambient lighting powder. This is in radiant light. I just bought this. I'm so excited about it. It gives you kind of like a natural golden glow. Really similar to luminous light, but a little bit warmer with that same brush I used. This is a Sigma, by the way, a Sigma F15. I'm going to put this pretty much everywhere just to give my skin a little bit of a healthy glow. Kind of use it as blush. On me, even though it looks really light in the in the pan, on me it's kind of like a shimmery warm powder. I don't know, it's like really weird, but on my skin tone it actually does really show up. I'm gonna go back into my Real Techniques buffing brush. I used this for my skin tint. I'm just gonna blend out the edges here. And then for highlight, I'm using this. I've never used this before. This is the new Exposed Highlight by Tarte. I'm so excited to use this. I'm gonna use my Zoeva 134 brush, one of my favorite highlighting brushes. Beautiful. This is kind of like a very light champagne shade. Not too gold, not too white, not too champagne. It's a really nice undertone. I really like that. I'm also gonna take a little bit right here. And on my Cupid's bow. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my eyes. This look is incredibly similar. I was actually gonna use these palettes that I recently bought, but I think I'm gonna save them for another video to do like a more dramatic look. These are the Nubian palettes. This is the Nubian, the original, and then this is the Nubian 2 by the brand called Juvia's Place. I saw this online and I went on the website and purchased it because the colors were so intense and pigmented when I saw them swatched online. Like, look at these colors, and they are just as pigmented as they look. So if you guys want to see a video where I use the Nubian palette, actually, I want to use this one more, more, because this one is just like your neutrals, which is beautiful too, but I want to use the other palette. It's a little bit more colorful. Let me know if you want to see that. But for now, we're just going to jump into this guy right here. I've been loving this. You know that. I'm going to take the shade Golden Ochre on a fluffy blending brush. This is the Sigma E40 and tap, tap off the excess. These, these powders are very, very powdery and they do have a lot of fallout. So you have to make sure that you are tapping your brush off because if not, it'll get all over your face, which I don't like about this palette, but I look past that. Just buffing a little bit of this color into my crease just to get the look going. I ordered a couple things on Sephora Ulta and Walgreens, some drugstore stuff, some high-end stuff. I want to do a haul. And I'm just waiting for that stuff to get to get to me. It should be coming in the mail in the next few days. So be expecting a drugstore slash high-end haul very soon. So many new things I've been wanting to try out, so. Now I'm gonna go into Raw Sienna, which is like my favorite shadow. For the crease, I'm gonna use a different crease brush. I'm gonna use this one by Sephora. It's their number 10 Pro Crease Brush. 
and I'm doing pretty much the same thing. It's just a, like a little bit deeper than golden ochre. It has a little bit more brown to it. I still haven't used my new camera. I just recently purchased a new camera because I'm so, I'm so tired of this camera. I've had it for a long time. Not this specific camera, but this model for a long time. I have right now the Rebel T4i by Canon. And before that, before this one, I had like the T1i, I had like the original. But I've been wanting something different. I'm just not happy with this one. So I purchased, where is it? It's the Canon EOS 80D. So I'm hoping that that one is a little bit better quality, but I'm, I'm struggling using that. I really suck with cameras. So I'm still trying to learn how to use the, the ADD. But hopefully, once I start using that camera, you will see a difference in quality in my videos. I'm very excited for that. Then I'm gonna take the brush I used before and just buff everything. I'm gonna use the shade Tempura here to highlight my brow bone. I am in love with this shade to highlight underneath the brow bone. It doesn't look like it is anything special in the pan, but it's so pretty. It reminds me a lot of Sin from the Urban Decay Naked Palette, like the original Naked Palette. I was obsessed. Sin, no, Virgin. I was obsessed with that highlighting shade and this one reminds me a lot of it. Now I'm gonna take Primavera and I'm gonna use this color on my entire lid. It's a really soft golden shade, but it's not like gold, like it's not too intense. Where is my e.l.f. $1 brush? Can't find it anywhere. That's fine. I'm gonna use the Ofra number 11 brush and I'm gonna pack that on my entire lid. Mainly staying on the inner parts of my eyes. I don't really want to bring it too far back. You can totally uh, wet this eyeshadow to make it really, really intense. But for day to day, I want something really soft. Like I don't want to, something too metallic, too gold or too foiled. I just want a soft wash of color to where it's like there's something there, but like it's not too much. I'm gonna take a little bit of this dark chocolate shade. It's called Cypress Umber, and I'm gonna use this on the outer corners of my eyes just to make it a little bit deeper there. I feel like it'll tie the look together, like it'll look complete. What, what shadow? I don't even know what brush I'm looking for. Oh, here it is. This is my trusty little Morphe 514. I love this little thing. I'm gonna use Cypress Umber on my outer corners. This shadow, super fallouty, lots of fallout. Tap that brush. I don't even wanna take this color into the crease. I'm just adding it right here to the outer corners. Do you see how it makes it a little bit smoky, like a very natural hint right here? Now I'm gonna take Vermeer, Vermeer, yes, Vermeer, and I'm gonna use this to highlight my inner corners with my Morphe 210. And then for my lower lash line, I'm gonna take raw sienna on a pencil brush and smudge that. This is the Morphe E36. I don't know what the deal is with Morphe discontinuing their Elite brushes. Supposedly, it's because they're gonna come out with like better brushes or something like that. But all I know is that they better come out with a brush just like the E36. It's the best pencil brush I've ever, ever used in my life. It's the only one that doesn't scratch my eye. It's like really soft and most pencil brushes are not. I'm gonna go into Golden Ochre with the same pencil brush and blend those two colors together. And then right at the outer corners, I'm gonna take this dark chocolate shade and add a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. 
And that completes the eye look. Now I'm just gonna apply some mascara. Actually, I'm gonna curl my lashes with my Shiseido, nope, nope, my Tweezerman lash curlers. And then I'm gonna apply my mascara and I'm gonna use the L'Oreal Carbon Black, the telescopic one. Seriously guys, if you've never tried using castor oil on your eyelashes, I know I keep saying it, but castor oil works miracles. I got mine on Amazon, I just searched pure 100% castor oil. Bought the first one I saw. And look how it's made my lashes. You guys know I burned off these lashes by mistake. And they're coming in nicely. Okay, so that completes the eyes. As you can see, it's a, such a wearable, nice daytime look using like the neutral shades or the natural shades in this palette. But to finish off this look, I'm gonna use this little guy right here. This is the same lip color I was wearing in my Foreo video. This is the same eye look and this is the same lip. So this is the NYX, no. This is the Tarte Lip Sculptor Lipstick and Lip Gloss in the shade Basic. So I'm gonna take the lipstick first. And then I'm gonna go in with the lip gloss on top. I love this lip combo. So yeah, that completes this look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the look that I was wearing in that Foreo video was pretty requested, so I did pretty much the exact same thing, only I switched up a couple of face products. But I've just been going for this look recently. I've been using this palette and I've been doing this look like almost every single day. And I think it pairs so nicely with natural, bronzy, glowy skin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my updated skincare routine. I didn't think that I needed to do this video because it's very similar to my last skincare routine. I think I posted it about a year ago, but it's been so requested to do an updated one. So here it is.